Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am Tamika Thompson and I am the owner and resume writer at Thompson Resume Writing Company. And for this video, I am going to be giving you some tips on how to leverage and use social media for your job search so that you can land interviews for exclusive jobs that may not be posted on any job boards. Now, social media, as we all know, is a very powerful tool, but I feel like people sometimes don't understand how powerful. I feel like when it comes to jobs, we always see the downsides of social media, right? So something goes viral and someone gets fired or, you know, something crazy happens and, you know, someone's social media information is posted all over the internet. Like we've seen the downsides, <laughs> but there are some upsides, especially when it comes to landing a new position and making you stand out as a candidate during the job search or during the application process. If you didn't know, 92% of companies and recruiters say that they do use social media to find candidates for jobs. And sometimes they will even find a candidate and encourage them to apply for a job, even if that person has not officially submitted an application. Also, three out of four hiring managers said that they do research or look at a candidate's social media profiles at some point during the interview process before a job offer is extended. So again, social media is a tool. You can definitely use it to your advantage in your job search, but the key is to understanding how to use it the right way and positioning your profiles and leveraging different features so that you can do so. So without further ado, here is how you can use social media in your job search. Let's get right into it. Number one on this list is to polish up your profile so that it has a professional aesthetic to be able to attract professional or career related opportunities. Now I know that I am in the minority here because I run a business. So by default, my Instagram, my LinkedIn, my Facebook are very polished. I have my post pictures. I have content that I share, etc. But you can do the same even if you don't have a business. Now, I know that social media is typically private, right? We like to share family moments, personal moments, milestones. We want to be free and let loose. But when it comes to turning your Instagram or your Facebook into a job attracting magnet, you may find that you have to swap out those wild and free moments or those wild and free posts for something that's a little bit more polished and a little bit more aesthetically pleasing or attractive to a recruiter. One way that you can start to polish up your Instagram or your social media profiles is to delete past pictures that may paint you in a negative light or show a side of you that you may not be comfortable with an employer seeing. Second step would be to start posting photos and images that are a little bit more polished and professional and branded. And this doesn't necessarily mean that you have to start posting pictures of yourself in a suit and tie or, you know, fancy headshots or anything, but just Consider the type of image that you would want someone to see ingrained in their brain or consider the type of picture that you would be comfortable with a recruiter seeing. Another tip here is to make all of your social media profiles public. And again, I know that this can seem like a lot because we consider social media to be private where we go to share what we want. But if you think about it, number one, there's no such thing as privacy on the internet. <laughs> and number two, having your profile public and just out in the open means that you don't have anything to hide. It also makes it easier for recruiters to contact you for positions. Now, of course, again, as a business owner, I'm on the other side of this because I constantly get job interview requests and recruiters contacting me on my social media just because of the way my Instagram and my LinkedIn is branded. If you are someone who wants to start leveraging social media and using social media for your job search, either to apply to jobs or for jobs to contact you, you have to make sure that your profile is professional, is polished. Maybe you create some sort of a brand Brand, or maybe you create a new aesthetic. The reason why this is number one on this list is because the following tips that I'll be sharing is going to be tied and correlated directly to this one. And I'm going to tell you why in the next one. Number two on this list is to follow job search related hashtags. So similarly to how you would follow a, a hashtag related to something that you are interested in, maybe you're interested in makeup or sports or beauty or fashion or lifestyle hacks or anything of that sort, 
follow those same hashtags in relation to your job search. So hashtags like now hiring, help wanted, job search, apply now, help needed, like all those type of hashtags, you want to follow them. You can follow them on any and every platform that you are on, or you can follow them on the platform that you are on the most or where you feel like you're going to get the most traction. So for me, I follow a ton of job search related hashtags on LinkedIn simply because I am a career expert and I share a lot of resume and job search and career related tips. So I use those hashtags to see what my peers in my industry are posting. And it also makes sure that my content shows up when people click those hashtags. Want to make sure that you are checking these hashtags daily to see what comes up. Typically when a new job is posted, if a company company is actively using social media to recruit candidates, they will use those hashtags in the comment or in the caption. And when you click that hashtag, nine times out of 10, those different type of posts are going to come up. And I have done this in the past and I did land an interview with a company. I didn't get an offer, but I did land an interview. Um, I was searching for, you know, hashtag marketing jobs, hashtag Chicago, you know, something along those lines. And one opportunity did come up and I was able to DM my resume to the recruiter and I ended up getting an interview. So by following those hashtags, you are staying current on new positions that are posted all the time. You get sometimes even a minute by minute update which can serve as a huge advantage because you will be able to be one of the first people who can apply to that job. And think about it, if a job is posted on social media one day, but they don't post it to the company website for another three to four days, well now you have a leg up because you were able to be among the first batch of people who was able to apply to that job. And most times when you are following those hashtags and a post does come up, you are able to click some sort of a link to get more information or receive instructions on how to officially apply to the job. And this is also where having a polished, branded type of profile is going to come into play because if you are commenting on the post or if you are messaging or DMing somebody directly about the position, of course, naturally, they're probably going to click on your profile to see what you're about. And if your profile is private or it looks unprofessional or it looks a little wild and crazy or super political or just a ton of red flags, you are going to be hurting yourself and maybe even shooting yourself in the foot because now your profile is going to be the first impression that they have of you. Make sure that it is a good one. Number three on this list is to follow profiles and pages of people and companies that you want to work for. Now, again, this is also something that I have done in the past, which is why I felt compelled to make this video because social media has helped me land so many interviews and find so many opportunities. On LinkedIn, you know that you can send connection requests to people. You know that you can follow company pages, right? Do the same on Twitter. Do the same on Instagram. Because if and when any type of company leader or the recruiters or the hiring manager or whomever makes a post about an available position, you can be among the first people to apply. If you are following the company and you're following their pages, then nine times out of 10, you're going to be one of the first people who is in the know about when they are looking to fill a particular position. So I know in the past companies were kind of not so heavily on LinkedIn, but now that LinkedIn has blown up, they are much more adamant and much more active when it comes to posting brand new roles or available roles or vacant roles or on LinkedIn. Another place that a lot of people don't think to follow pages or follow profiles is Twitter. So I know that Twitter gets a bad rap, but you don't have to use it. You know, you don't have to use the toxic side of Twitter. (laughs) You can use Twitter for your job search. There are all types of company leaders and CEOs and thought leaders and experts who share jobs on a daily basis. And because people don't know about the advantages and the benefits of using Twitter for jobs, most times, sometimes their posts don't get a lot of reach, which just kind of narrows the pool of people who may have found out or learned about the opportunity. So if you don't have a Twitter, create a profile, follow the company pages that you're interested in, go ahead and set up alerts, follow the hashtags, and you can just leave it at that. 
Next on this list is similar to number three, but it's not the same. It varies just slightly. And that is to follow the profiles and the pages of company leaders and employees who work for or work at the company that you are interested in working for. Most company leaders at this point, so CEOs or SVPs or even directors, have some form of social media, even if it's just a LinkedIn or even if they're just on Twitter. Follow them because you can stay in tune with organizational updates. So maybe the company is going to be going through a major hiring season coming up, or maybe the company is launching a brand new division or brand new part or a brand new department, or maybe they're embarking on a new business venture and they're going to be adding members to their team. That happens a lot. Also, this is a number one way where when you're interviewing and a, a recruiter will ask you, what do you know about the company or what have you heard about the company? If you're following those pages and those profiles, that automatically gives you that information. That automatically gives you information that you can reply back with. So follow company leaders. Again, find them on Twitter, find them on LinkedIn, either follow them or connect with them. Also, when it comes to connecting with different employees who work at the company, focus on building an authentic relationship first and networking genuinely before you reach out to this person and say, hey, so-and-so, I want to work for this company in two years, you know, or I'm looking for a job right now. Can you hook me up? Can you get me an into this company? Please understand that networking and for somebody to refer you or reference you for a position, they have to really, really know you and it takes time to build a relationship. So don't add people right away if you are currently actively seeking for a job because they may not feel comfortable enough to, you know, list you as a reference or list you as someone that the recruiter can reach out to. Focus on connecting with employees before you start actively job searching so that you have time to build that connection and build that rapport first. And after you build the relationship and you all have, you know, talked a couple of times, had a couple of coffee chats, maybe some virtual meetups and you've supported them and they've supported you and vice versa, like it's a legit relationship, then you can reach out to them. Then you can feel comfortable asking for a recommendation or a referral. But aside from all of that, <laughs> sometimes employees will repost when recruiters or hiring managers share a position. And this does happen a lot on LinkedIn. So again, if you're looking to work at a particular company, go ahead and go to the LinkedIn profile, go ahead and find people who have the same title that you may be going after and just shoot them a connection request. Go ahead and go to the LinkedIn profile, go ahead and find people who have the same title that you may be going after and just shoot them a connection request. If you can find them on Twitter, maybe they're a blogger or they do a lot of thought leadership or they're featured in some articles, feel free to connect with them. Number five on this list is to post or join online groups and forums. So there's like a gazillion Facebook groups out there. <laughs> there's also a lot of LinkedIn groups, there's spaces on Twitter, it's like there are all types of groups all over the place. So if you are not in any online groups, I highly encourage you to join them. And if you are looking for a job and you are a part of a group already, I really encourage you to make one single post just alerting the group that you are in the process of looking for a new job, what type of positions or opportunities you're interested in, and if someone is able to help you out, if someone knows someone or if someone works somewhere who has an opening that's related to what you want to do, don't be afraid to post in those groups. Now, online groups has been very lucrative for me in terms of my job search. I've been a part of several Facebook groups that had maybe over 15,000 members. And one time I remember I had gotten laid off from a job and I was on the hunt for a new position. I posted in the group and immediately was able to get connected with like five to seven people who were actively hiring for marketing people at that time. I was able to secure a couple of interviews just off of that alone. Again, it's estimated that over 87% of jobs are filled through networking and joining online groups and spaces is the number one way that you can network. So if you're not doing that already, please do it. But again, understand that in that group, your profile picture is going to appear and chances are people are going to click on it to learn some more information about you. So make sure that the content that they're seeing 
is professional, is polished. Last on this list is to make sure that your resume can be DM'd or messaged or sent at the drop of a dime. Y'all, time is of the essence when you are finding and trying to apply to a job on social media. If you say you're interested and if they have an opening, they want your resume right then and there, okay? So make sure that your resume is updated, make sure that it's current, make sure that you have it stored somewhere where you can easily get it to whomever on whatever platform. In order to do this, make sure that you have your resume saved in your email inbox somewhere. Maybe it's in a special folder or make sure that you have it saved to some sort of a cloud that you can easily access and download it so that you can get it over to them. Now for me, I use Dropbox. So anytime I'm submitting my resume via Twitter or via Instagram, I'm just, you know, downloading it really quick from Dropbox, attaching it as a PDF and getting it right on over. But you cannot be inquiring about these roles and searching for these roles if you're your resume is not together and is not ready to be sent ASAP. Okay, you're wasting your time and theirs. So that's it. Those are some super simple ways that you can use social media in your job search to uncover jobs, find jobs, apply to jobs, etc. Again, I know that a lot of times, especially in the media, we see the downsides of having social media, people getting fired, people losing their jobs, people, you know, facing repercussions as a result of something they posted or something they shared. But there are many, many upsides to social media. It's just playing your cards right and knowing the do's and the don'ts so that you are able to attract and be able to apply to positions. I really hope that you found this video helpful. If so, go ahead and hit the like button. Go ahead and give me a like down below. If you have more questions in regards to how to use social media in your job search that I did not cover in this video, go ahead and drop your comments in the comment box down below. If there's any tip in particular that resonated with you in this video, go ahead and comment that down down below as well. I'd be interested in hearing if something stuck out to you, if there's something that you are going to apply ASAP in your current or your future job search. If you are a professional who needs assistance with your resume, maybe you realize that you don't have enough time to write your resume. Maybe you realize that writing is just not your strength, or maybe you're just not sure where to start and laying out your resume and trying to communicate your value is just way more than you can handle. I would be more than happy to assist you. At this point in my resume writing career, Career. I've been writing resumes for about 10 years and I've written over 800 resumes thus far. My specialty is transforming bland, lackluster resumes into powerful selling tools that help career professionals land interviews two times faster in their job search. I am currently accepting clients. If you are interested in working with me and you would love to get started, please visit my website at www.thompsonresumes.com. For more job search and career and resume tips from me, feel free to connect with me on social media. My Instagram handle is at underscore Mika Thompson. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn. My LinkedIn profile name is Tamika Thompson. I also have an email list that you can subscribe to. The link to do so is in the description box down below. If you are watching this video, but you are not subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you can join my growing YouTube community. Thanks again so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time with another helpful video. Cheers to using social media to get all the jobs in 2024 and beyond, y'all. Bye.